Hello friends, this is Gabby, or Serena Midori. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how I made my Undertale sprites. Uh, these little guys right here. Or girls, I mean, because, you know, females. But I made these today out of my character, Madgap. And I also made one for my friend today, of uh, their character, Jay. And um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, show you guys in a video just how I do it, because... Uh, I was thinking about doing it picture by picture, and I thought, no, it's, it's better if I just show you. Uh, to clarify, um, I will show you methods for uh, two, techni technically two programs, but one of the other methods requires two programs. If that makes sense, I'll show you in a second. Um, let's see. So let's just uh, open up a thing. And so let's say that you have your sketch. So let's just sketch a random guy. Okay, so we got our guy. Now, um, what I want to do is show you, all I do is take the sketch, and uh, I made this template just to show you. This is how I used to work a lot of the times while doing pixel art. I went and grabbed a bunch of the sprites from the actual sprite sheets. Um, I know that Toby Fox has requested it not be posted, so it's probably going to be hard to find actual ripped sprites, but I know that if you want... I will uh, post some of these, like the completed ones that I made of like Sans and Metaton, but um, a lot of these, like, you know, there's a lot of spoilers in there, so I don't really recommend going in and just finding the sprite sheets. But anyways, let's just uh, post in our little guy, and as you can see, he's very large. Very large, too large for the game. My rule of thumb is never make him, make your sprites taller than Metaton or Moffat. They're gonna be about the heights that you want, so I'm just gonna scale this guy down. It's about, eh, he's not gonna be that tall. So you use the other ones as guides. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we have our sized down sketch. Now, if you're working in Paint Tool SAI, I recommend that you change the hue and saturation, make it completely white. Because if you're gonna do a sprite just like you did in the game, you're gonna wanna have it on a black background. You see, especially here with Toriel, if you take off the background, this is what her actual sprite looks like. It, um, you know, doesn't really look like much until you had the black background and then you realize part of it was transparent. And he didn't really put outlines on some of the hands because he already knew that the black background was going to fill that up for him. So, following uh, Toby's example, or, you know, the sprite workers in general in this, um, let's see, we're gonna just move our little guy in here. And I like to make copies just in case because I know I'm messy and I don't like to mess things up. But let's see. Um, I want his face to be white and his pants to be white. But I want everything else to be black, like his shirt and arms I want to be black. So, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. But what I like to do is on the part that I made black so I could actually see the sprite, I'm gonna add another layer and click this clipping, clipping group little added thing. And I'm gonna fill it with just color. Let's just pick, uh, uh, pink. Now it's pink. You can toggle the opacity and change it to different colors. Now you'll be able to see the colors a little better instead of just black and white. The reason I like to add this as a clipping group is because I wanna be able to easily see whether or not the sprite looks good on a black background. So, looking at a sketch, I'm just gonna go in zoom in as much as I can until you you can already see that the sketch itself was kind of pixelized. Now some sketches will be messier than this so it won't be as easy but I'm gonna show you on paint tool side you're gonna have this binary brush. Now a cool little trick is that on your keyboard near the backspace that uh, the minus symbol there if you click it changes your cursor to an eraser so you can draw or you can erase in pixels. I recommend doing this because you don't really want to use any of the other brushes for uh, pixel art, they uh, they kind of blend, which is like, you know, it's cool, but it's not really what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start outlining, kind of like doing line art. You see, it kind of makes sense where I want the hair to go. If you're not good at line art, that's fine. Trust me, I was never good at line art when I was doing pixel art. All I really did was just kind of follow the lines that I saw. And when I zoomed out and thought it didn't look very good, I'm just like, okay, well, let me fix it. Let me add some pixels here to kind of round out the top a little bit. And by pressing that minus, I can get it to be an eraser, and it's really handy. Most of this is just going to be very boring. I apologize, but 
it's important to see the process that it does take a little while. So. And there. Now I've got the hair outlined. Most of it anyways. But you can see, I just wanted to start with the hair. Because I know I want it to be black. Now, I see, I've already made a little mistake though. I've outlined the hair in black that I want to see. But, what about this spot right here? Because I already know that this is going to be filled in black. I am going to switch to white over here. And outline this part. Just so you can tell where the hair is disconnected. And because I already know that this is going to be white too, I can go ahead and outline that in white. What I used to do, and what I did with my sprites before, is I outlined all the white parts in black and all the black parts in white. But you see, if you have it on a black background, the only things that need to actually be outlined are things that are black. So you can outline this part in white because you already know it's going to be white. And then you can go right over here and outline what isn't white. That way, on the black background, you'll actually be able to tell where the hair is. If you make mistakes, don't worry. Just erase it. Very easy to do when you're working pixel by pixel, but that's another thing I'm going to mention. This is how I used to do pixel art. I didn't have any fancy tablets. I didn't have any anything besides my mouse and MS Paint. So uh, this is really comfortable for me. It may be very tedious to you. <laughs> I recommend, though, going slowly because you want to be able to make sure you get every pixel in. That way you don't leave any mistakes. Then again, that might just be me. It's up to you, really, how you want to do your pixel art, but this is how I go about it. So let's see. Let's finish up this part by marking off the rest of the hair. Okay. So, it's a little bit more difficult in Paint Tool Sai. I don't really remember exactly my settings. But, I have this um, selection area. And I'm gonna select the very bottom of color difference. Select the inside of this. And then you'll be able to fill it with the color that you want. There we go. And then we'll do the same for the inside of the head. I'll color it white. Cool, we've already got part of our sprite. If you take off the pink, and take off the sketch, you've already got something already kind of recognizable. I'll admit this is not my best work, but you know, this is a little guy. He's, he's happy to see you. And that reminds me, we should probably do his face. The way that I like to do about this sort of thing is that I just take the pixel that I've already done. Let's say that I want his face and his head to be separate. If I want to animate him so he's bouncing and his head just kind of, his face just bounces everywhere else. I'm going to take down the opacity of this so I can show the sketch and just make a completely new layer for this. Usually what I like to do is label them, so this is the head. So let's make another layer called the face. And now on the same brush, we're just going to do that. Now, I want to mention the best thing about doing these sprites is that you do not have to do exactly the sketch. Do what looks good pixel art wise. Do not try to do what you can't do. And I'll show you an example of that. You see, Mad Gab, my character, has star eyes, like actual stars. I can't do that with pixel art this small, so I made an asterisk sort of star to kind of represent that. And it may not always be seen through the pixel art itself if you haven't seen actual art of her. And especially right here, she has X's for eyes, but they may not be seen because of the small detail. You gotta not worry about things so much like that and do the best that you can to portray what is there. So, in terms of stuff like this, a smile or changing certain details about a face because they don't exactly show up well unless you have tons of different gradients or different colors, you know, you just try the best that you can. It's really simple with these kind of sprites that uh, Toby Fox did because they're just black and white, so you don't have to worry so much about color and contrast. But see? Now you can move the face independently of the head, and it looks great. So now I can center a little better, and he looks better. Yeah. Alright, so that's about the process that I go about it. Now the other method I wanted to show you is similar. Let's just go back into here, and I'll pull up this. I'll pull up our sketch. Before I do, though, 
Let's uh, make it dark again. And we'll go into MS Paint. Now I want to mention I'm actually using the e uh, XP version. I re-downloaded it today, and I'll show you why I prefer it over the other versions. So now we have it in MS Paint. We have our little sketch guy. Now before I actually start, I'm going to mention the other program that I'm going to be using is this program called Urban View. Urban View is a program that I've been using for a long time, completely safe, free to download, and I'll find the download link and put it in the description. Um, it's essentially an image viewer, but it's not just that. And I'll show you what I use it for in just a second. First things first, you're going to want to pick any of these basic colors. The red, yellow, the bright green, cyan, that bright blue, that magenta. Like, those colors that, like, you know, you kind of cringe to look at sometimes. I'm going to just go with red, because that always works for me. Red or black. Black or any of those colors works. So now, we're just going to zoom in as much as we can, we have, and just outline what we have. I will say that I was kind of outlining in Paint Tool a uh, Sai with uh, my tablet pen. But this is really the olden days of my pixel art. I had to click each single square with the mouse. Now I recommend this for people who don't have Sai, specifically just because MS Paint is free and Urban View is free. And this is actually something that I'm more familiar with. It's easier to do pixel art in MS Paint because that's literally all you're working with, especially in this version. In the newer versions, they give you some fake brushes to work with and they can kind of blend and it's not what you want when it comes to pixel art. You can already see the differences in how I would uh, pixel art here. It takes a lot more trial and error, but it's not that bad. There we go. Now, I'm gonna point something out. In MS Paint, you have one layer, which means we just drew on the sketch layer, and for some artists, they're probably clutching their chest like, no, no. Let me show you why this program is so cool. This is our little area that we wanna use. You copy it right into your clipboard, and on Urban View, you're gonna do Shift G, and you're gonna pull Gamma Correction all the way down over to that 6.99 several times. I do it just like a bunch of times without really thinking about it, just for good measure. And what this does is it pulls off every other color but those colors I listed off before and including black. Now you copy that over. Now you don't work in transparencies in a... Oops. You don't work in transparencies in paint. So we'll just pull this over here, and now we have an outline. Perfectly, totally normal outline. No sketches on the layers, and now we can just, uh, here's another trick that I know. Uh, pick the color that you want to replace, and on the secondary color, pick the color that you want to get rid of, or you want to add in, my bad. You right click that, and then while holding the right click, erase. Instead of just doing the erase function, you right click it and you can change whatever color you want to the secondary color you have. And then from this point, then you would just experiment with what goes where, because uh, it's a little bit harder when you don't have black on the outline, but a simple little uh, fill bucket and then control Z will tell you just how you're doing. So maybe in this one I thought, oh, he looks better with white hair. So now I made myself a little bit better, but if I wanted to change it to black, what I could do a little bit you want to pick a color that is not black or white for one thing this in terms of like changing it to a temporary color now I'm gonna change it to red just so I can do this I'll have to go back and fix some of those but see that's why this thing is so cool now go into the fill bucket fill that in with black and then change the red to white. Now again, the thing with the no layers thing. In Paint Tool Sci, if you are coloring this and checking, you may want to make sure you keep those colors there. That way, when you color it black, 
then you can do this. It just depends on whether or not you want to save it with a black background or with a white background. Paint tool, uh, MS Paint, my, my bad. MS Paint has that downside of not having transparencies, but if you'd already like to show it on the black background, just make sure all your white outlines are in a different color. It's a little bit tedious, but I figured I would at least try to show you what I would do if I used MS Paint. But, uh, <laughs> no, I have been using Paint Tool Sci for my sprites. And as you can see, there's already a big difference. Look at these little guys. I'm gonna put them next to each other. But think about it, I just kind of made an animation right there. Anyways, the point I'm making here is that doing the sprite work is actually pretty simple. You don't have to buy a paint tool side to do it. MS Paint works just as well. It's a little bit tedious, but you can still do it. All I'd have to do is to go back into MS Paint, fix up some of the where I wanted to put some of these pixels. It doesn't look that bad. Now with paint tool side, on the other hand, like you have that added bonus of doing layers, so if you wanted to do animations, I would recommend that. If you want to do animations still though, I would recommend having Photoshop. That's how I actually animated my sprites as well. But uh, I don't really recommend doing the pixel art in Photoshop unless you're really accustomed to it. I never could really grow accustomed to it, but that's just my personal preference. If you find it easier to do so, go right ahead. So that's what that's basically my process. Uh, <laughs> I guess um, if there's questions and stuff, I can go back over it. But um, hope this helps you guys, and I hope that some of you artists out there will start making sprites of your sketches too. It's really not that hard. All you gotta do is size it down and draw some dots over. It, it's not they're not the squares. They're little tiny squares. I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> Thanks for watching.